it's so deep here. Yeah. You got water. I don't know if I showed you guys, but we got new plants in. The host is completely dried up, fried to a crisp. So we got other plants. You like it? Um, today is an interesting day. I'm what? finally on vacation. No more summer school. What? Okay. Come back inside for one second. Um, but today we are having family over because it is my dad's two year passing. Um, so my cousins are coming over and their kids are coming over. And my mom is also coming over. So I'm just cleaning up the house a little bit. So they're gonna be here for lunch and we're ordering takeout. Um, this is my dad. Um, and then we also just cremated him and these are my parents' rings, wedding rings. But we cremated him because my dad didn't want like a burial or a service or anything like that. He was a very simple guy. Um, so I just asked if I could keep his ashes here. So yeah, um, it has been two years and the only thing that keeps replaying in my mind is like how he passed. Uh, because he did pass in our home. Um, he was on hospice. He didn't want to go to a hospital. He didn't want to go to a hospice home. So uh, I told him he could stay at my place um, until he passed. So I'm going to go ahead and get ready. And then I'll tell you guys a little bit more about um, how my dad passed. Bodhi, are you cleaning? No. We have people coming over. Your cousins are coming over. So I guess this is just like a little story time. Um, so I don't know if you guys remember, but I did mention that my dad's passing was one of the hardest things that I ever had to go through. And it's mainly because I was his caretaker. My mom and I, we took care of him until his last day. Um, and when he lived in our home, uh, he was projected to only live for like uh, six months and it was six months on the dot that he had passed. Um, but prior to that, he was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. And I found out he had colon cancer when I was still pregnant with Bodhi. So that was in like 2020. Uh, and then he passed soon after. And it's my understanding that once you know you have cancer, it's been in your body for at least five years. So he had the symptoms, um, irregular bowel movements, bleeding, uh, stomach pain, bloatedness. Uh, he had everything, but he did not like to go to the hospital. He didn't want to get checked out. In hindsight, I don't think he actually knew how severe his issues were because he thought it was just something he ate or like he was drinking heavily uh, that day or something. So he has had colonoscopies in the past, but they were considered incomplete because they could not get the scope all the way into his colon. There was like something blocking. So he just kind of dismissed it and then never pursued it further. Um, he was still pretty mobile, but his, um, I guess demeanor and like attitude of things started to change because he just became depressed. So when he had six months left to live, the doctors basically told him, hey, you need to continue to do chemotherapy, but he literally could not walk anymore. He had fallen overnight at my mom's house and nobody could pick him up. He hit his head uh, on the bathroom counter. Um, they had to call 911 because, it was, it, because this was in the middle of the night. Uh, no one could help assist him. So uh, when the people came and they helped him up, um, they basically said, he was dehydrated, so they took him to the hospital. But after that point, he was unable to walk anymore. So after the hospital, we did try rehab for 10 days uh, because those were our options, either rehab or go home. And the hospital basically already knew his condition of cancer, so they really couldn't help him. Um, he became so weak that he could not continue chemotherapy anymore. And um, I guess we were really confused about it because 
the doctors were saying that he should continue, but he couldn't even walk. He had to have an oxygen tank. He had to have a wheelchair. And it became very straining on my mom because my mom is very little and she could not, you know, assist him much. So we did try rehab for 10 days to help rehabilitate him in his movement, his legs, uh, but he was not able to regain any of his strength. Um, I feel like my mom has a lot of guilt for putting him in a rehab home um, because my dad hated it. He would scream, he would cry. Every day I would visit him after school and he was just not happy because he was just in a bed, in a room, in a foreign place. So after that 10 days, I said, okay, dad, you can just come home with me and stay at my house. And so the day that he left rehab was the day of my birthday. And I will never forget my birthday now. Um, he moved in with me on my birthday and then we started taking care of him until July. Uh, and then that's when he passed. And a lot of that was so hard because I still had to take care of my family. I still had a huge responsibility to everything else. I did stop going to school. I took FMLA just so that I could be my dad's caretaker at night. Um, I gave him his medicines. I helped change him. I helped take him to the bathroom, everything. Michael got my dad some flowers. We're going to set it up. And then I'll also show you our grocery haul. I am not going poo poo. <sighs> He's still not feeling well either. Doctor says he has pots. Wait, what did, he, what did the doctor say? <laughs> what do you have? You have something. M-T-H-F-R. <laughs> something. Now let me show you what we got at the store, AKA what Michael got. Michael! Michael! Okay, so I don't like popcorn, but Bodhi loves the cinnamon flavored popcorn, puff corn. It's like a airy, it disintegrates quick. It's like not very popcorn material, but it's, um, it's a good snack for Bodhi. He likes that. We're also trying gluten free now because Michael um, is probably gluten intolerant. So we got that whole grain bread. We love salads. So romaine, pack of three. Mushrooms. Fries. I think we're gonna get, we're gonna eat tuna sandwiches this week. Uh, croutons for our salad, which not gluten free, but it's okay. Um, more wipes and detergent pods. We love the chicken teriyaki strips. I'm gonna make like a little small rice bowl. Green onion, cilantro, tomatoes. We love pickles. Chickpeas, it's a staple. Um, we also got Avocados for our sandwiches. And a cucumber, spinach, because Cody loves spinach. Some onions, iceberg lettuce, limes. I don't see lemons. So we, oh, here's one lemon. We like to make our own dressing sometimes. And that's it for the week, very simple. Everyone love, it's been a couple hours now. I never know if I should record people or not because I feel like that's intrusive, right? Even though they're family, I don't know. Anyway, it was a good time. We ate, we laughed, we prayed for my dad, and then um, that was about it. 
So I forgot to tell you guys, um, Bodhi completed his reading log challenge for the summer. He read 50 books and a lot of the coupons that they gave us as his prize uh, we can't use only because we're vegan but I mean he's not so much vegan but um, we got like an ice cream free ice cream cone or burger from McDonald's we also got like a free cake slice of cake from Portillo's there was a free fry from uh, Whataburger and a milkshake from Chick-fil-a just a bunch of cool coupons we just came back from home goods TikTok said that they had Halloween stuff out. I didn't see any. Well, there was a small section. All we got was a toy set for Bodhi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, we just started uh, watching Hell's Kitchen. Like literally just started watching. I've never seen an episode. Have you seen an episode? <laughs> nope. Now we're reading it. Now it's like we're hooked because I kind of like the competition aspect of it. I don't like the games, but I like like when they're in his restaurant cooking and it's so hard for them to like choose who's not going to make it to the next round. I don't know, this show has been on forever. I can't believe we were just now discovering it. Yes, season 22, it started in like 2004. So we're gonna watch that and then eat our leftover foods. I'm gonna make some ramen. And yeah, we're gonna call it a night.